on Coast to Coast AM. This is Ian Punnett. Dr. Bernard Hayes, the God theory, the universe's zero point fields, and what's behind it all. So, what what are what were the 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 best um, items that you came across? Where you know people brought up the, uh, the you know the the case for God through what? Uh, what was the door in for you on that? Well, actually, it has to do with the the laws of physics. There are at least uh, ten fundamental constants or laws of physics that when you look at them all together, really point to uh, their conspiring to create a universe that's uh, congenial for life. And uh, that's emerged out of the last 20 or 30 years' worth of astrophysics research and physics research. And we can go through those if you want to, but it's those 10, uh, at least those 10 constants and laws of nature go that are, are just right that uh, have convinced me that there, is, that there is an intelligence behind it all. Yeah, okay. How does that all fit together? Go ahead, go through them. All right. Well, let's do it quickly so as not to uh, get too technical. There's the ratio of the gravitational to the Coulomb force. That's one. Strength of the nuclear force, which lets stars shine. A little, a little difference of 10 or 20 percent one way or the other would have made that impossible to, uh, to lead to stars. We have a measure of the matter density in the universe. We have the ratio of dark matter to ordinary matter, the amount of dark energy, clumpiness of, of the early quantum universe, uh, a resonance that gives rise to carbon, uh, some of the properties of water, the ratio of the proton to the neutron mass, and lastly, the fact that matter wins out over antimatter in the creation of the universe. And so that's, you know, I try to be very quick about it because I realize this is kind of glaze over stuff for many listeners because it gets into the details of physics and astrophysics. But these ten constants have conspired to create a universe in which you have galaxies that arise and stars that form and planets that form around stars, and that's where hospitable environments for life take place. And that's how life arises in the universe. And I think that's part of the plan that, um, that the intelligence had behind the, the making of the universe to uh, engineer a universe where life forms can arise and its own consciousness can then enter into those life forms and experience what that's like. What is the origin of the intelligence? Well, I think you have to take that as a given. I mean, if you, there is an origin to the intelligence, then you have to ask, well, what's the origin of the origin? So you're back right. to something further <laughs> still. It's the Aristotle's old problem about the uncaused cause. Right, right. So, okay, so we just look at that phenomenologically, right? We just simply say, it just is. It just is. And on the scientific side, when people try to explain this, they say, well, okay, it has to do with quantum fluctuations, perhaps. But then you ask yourself, well, were there any quantum laws there? I mean, you, without quantum laws, you can't have quantum fluctuations. Who made the quantum laws? In either case, you've got the same problem. Same problem being it's got to start with something. There has to be a first cause that simply is. You have to take that as given and something that you take for granted. That's either some intelligence or it's some set of laws that were just there. Either case is the, the same dilemma. Okay. Well, then, here, uh, I, I'm in the place of uh, the skeptic in, you know, conversation with you here, even though that's an unusual place for me being an armchair theologian on my own right. But so let me, what would you say then to the atheist who simply says, you are, you are assigning meaning to randomness. It just phenomenologically, it's just true, it just happened. It happened that things clumped that way, and light bent that way, and all these things just happened, and so uh, in the rearview mirror of our history, we say there must have been some design that brought us here. I would say you're absolutely right. That's a perfectly plausible way to look at it. Moreover, if you want to take it further, you can say, well, this implies there have to be other universes, and there are books written about this. For example, Physicist Leonard Susskind wrote a book called Cosmic Landscapes, in which he talks about string theory and about how that leads to other universes. If you have lots of other universes, each of which is different from the other, then you, you're likely to have ours just purely for statistical reasons. And, of course, we're in the one that we can exist in, so we're here. That's perfectly logical, and, you know, you can believe that if you want to. I wouldn't try to argue against it. It's just that, to me, that, that does not appeal as the, the explanation. And I would say there is some evidence on my side and zero evidence on the other. And the evidence on my side is the, the set of uh, transcendent and mystical experiences that people have had throughout the ages. I would regard that as evidence. On the other side, you know, for multiverses that have lots and lots of other different kinds of universes than ours, and explaining away ours as a matter of statistics, there's no evidence on that side. It's logical, but there's no evidence. Okay. What would you say to the person who says uh, that... The uh, the child was hit by the drunk driver standing on the corner because uh, 
Well, not because the drunk driver got distracted by their uh, cell phone, and not because the the person who was calling the drunk driver was worried because they had been out all night and finally just broke down and decided to call and find out what happened, and not because the drunk driver had been overserved at the last bar where they were sitting because they hold their liquor well and had convinced the bartender that they could take two more and that they wouldn't be over the line. It wasn't because all of those things in the chain of event. It's because the there's the divine hand of God uh, wanted. It was God's plan that that child be run over at that corner by that drunk driver. What would you say to that? Well, I would reject that because I think that that kind of intervention, that takes us back almost to intelligent design. And the, the God I envision doesn't sit around and manipulate people or things or events like some kind of a puppeteer. The God I envision wants to create a world in which things happen on their own, in which he can sort of step aside and let the laws that he has created, or I say he, he, she, it has created, let those laws work, work out in their own way, their own destiny, and let something arise that is new and novel, not something that's engineered. So that's why I would say that the explanation of, of God reaching down and saying, I'm going to make this happen, it doesn't appeal to me, and it doesn't seem to make any sense in the context of a God theory, in which you want the, the intelligence to create an environment in which new and original things can happen on their own. That's, I think, what gives the meaning to the, 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 the great potential that this intelligence has. That's what makes experience possible. Well, I, I'll, I'll grant you that, but here would be my point is that aren't couldn't you argue that in both cases the person who's standing there saying god must have wanted that little girl dead and that's why that drunk driver rounded that corner at that time that it was her destiny that it was fate that this was it, it is part of an ordered universe it, what's the difference between that and saying we are here through a series of events um, over which we had no control, but so there must have been some sort of divine plan that brought us here to this moment. Well, I think there was a divine plan, and that divine plan was to have a universe in which life forms can originate and evolve, and then for consciousness, for that same divine consciousness, to enter into those life forms and experience what that is, is like, to basically take sterile potential and turn it into actual experience. And so in the case that you're just talking about, that's it's not that God reached down, I would say. I mean, who am I speaking for God? But if I were to try to explain this, it's not God reaching down and making this happen. It's rather, rather the, the God consciousness inside the little girl, perhaps choosing to have this happen for some reason or other having to do with her nature, her destiny, or her karma. Uh, it's something that's internal to the human being, not, not something that some God from the, in the heavens reaches down and does. That, that wouldn't be... It wouldn't be consistent with the idea of creating a universe in which novelty can arise. Novelty here meaning pure accident? By novelty, I mean something that's unplanned, something that arises because of its own nature, not something that's imposed from the outside. Uh, talk about karma. How do you view karma? Well, I think that, uh, you know, living lives on this planet is, can lead to, some, um, lead to some pretty evil things happening or evil things that people do. And uh, I don't think that you, you get uh, a free pass for living a life that uh, does things that, that are not kind to other people, not, not uh, compassionate to other people. So I think that there's a kind of spiritual evolution that takes place that we participate in as we, we live our lives. And I guess I should go ahead and say that I, I believe that we live multiple lives because it makes no sense to me that if I'm correct that we are the conscious, consciousness of God living life, to enter into life one time in a, four, in a 14 billion year old universe and having that be, be all. I think we evolve as spiritual beings through multiple lifetimes. And so it's, that then calls for something to describe what happens to us or what we undergo in response to what we do. And if we live good lives, uh, we are compassionate to other people, we're liable to uh, be rewarded in some way, not rewarded with a heaven, but rather rewarded with um, the, the evolution of our souls perhaps involving a better lifetime the next time, perhaps moving on eventually to become other life forms, perhaps we will become greater life forms. So I think that karma is a sort of a, a multi-lifetime uh, uh, sort of balancing of, of, of circumstances. It's sort of like a conservation law in physics where you have the same number of uh, positive and negative, negative charges before and after an interaction. So I view karma as kind of a balancing uh, conservation law in a spiritual sense. 
Uh, I go back a few sentences just to point out you used the B word again. Did I? 